two views now from leaders in the two cities where the president visited today. William Brangham has those. President Trump's first stop today was in Dayton, Ohio, where a gunman killed nine people and wounded 26 others early Sunday morning. Ahead of his visit, Mayor Nan Whaley said she felt it as her duty to welcome the president and that she hoped he was coming to add value to our community. Mayor Nan Whaley joins me now. Mayor, thank you very much for being here. And again, uh, on behalf of all of us, the condo our condolences to you and what your town has been going through. Before we talk about the president's visit, I'm just curious how Dayton is doing now. Well, I think we're a little tired here in Dayton. You know, we've gotten an awful lot of press coverage, and uh, 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 most of the reporters around town have talked about how great and gracious Daytonians have, have been. But, you know, we're in the process of getting ready to really undergo um, some serious grieving. Uh, the visitations and funerals will be starting in the next few days, and uh, you know we're just trying to keep our community together. And we saw that you visited some victims of this massacre with the president today. How did that visit go? Oh, uh, the president was very well received by the victims uh, and the first responders. We saw the, uh, the guys that were so heroic uh, on the streets uh, on, fifth, on Fifth Street that, that Saturday night. Uh, they were super grateful to see the president of the United States and um, uh, lots of pictures all around for those folks. You had said in advance of the president's visit that you had hoped, you had said that his rhetoric has been painful for many in our community, meaning your sure. community. What did you mean specifically by that? Well, I'll just say that when the president announced he was coming Tuesday, you could just feel a tension in the community that we really hadn't experienced before that. And I think, you know, that is not anything he said specifically today or yesterday. It's just three years of this hyper-partisan uh, way that he works, and that's, that's, that's painful for some people in the community. Uh, I am glad the president went when he decided to come, that he decided to go and focus really on the victims and first responders. I appreciate that he did not go to the Oregon District. And actually, the Oregon District was pretty tense today during his visit uh, with both pro-Trump and anti-Trump people walking the streets. And so that's, that's what I mean when his rhetoric is just so hot. Did his visit today and in your conversations with him, did, did you communicate those concerns to him? Did, did he uh, assuage any of your concerns about his rhetoric and how he has governed? Look, uh, you know, my focus has actually been on just getting something done around gun control. And so my, my conversation with the president wasn't anything to do with his rhetoric, but everything about getting something done when it comes to common sense gun legislation. And really trying to see if there was a way forward uh, to be truly bipartisan. And frankly, that's just something we haven't seen for a very long time in Washington, D.C. I mean, as you know, the people who watch how gun legislation has risen and fallen in Washington, D.C., especially after the Sandy Hook massacre where all those children were killed. And right. people said if nothing can happen after that event, what makes you think something is different now? Well, uh, you know, I'm a person of hope, and uh, I know that Dayton was the 250th mass shooting in the country uh, this year. And so we are getting to the place where every single community is, has experienced some sort of um, gun violence that could have been preventable. Uh, when so many people experience it, I think more and more Americans make it a higher priority. And I think we're seeing that as you look at polls where the majority of Americans are for an assault weapons ban. 90% of Ohioans are for universal background checks. Those are enormous numbers, and really the NRA and their money can only hold us out for so long. From your conversations with the president today, did you get a sense that he would push that? Because our understanding is that, that the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has said he won't bring any bills to the Senate floor that he doesn't think the president will support. Did, did you try to persuade the president today that this is something he has to get behind? Absolutely. Uh, Senator Brown and I, towards the end, said, hey, you know, uh, why don't you con uh, consider an assault weapons ban? Uh, the president pointed out that President Obama let the assault weapon ban la lapse. And I said to the president, hey, you know, maybe this is something that you could get done that, that President Obama couldn't get done. That would be something spectacular, uh, pointing out that Senator DeWine had even voted for the assault weapon ban. Uh, the president pivoted and said he was going to do something terrific for our uh, first responders who we had just met. And Senator Brown eloquently said, the best thing you could do for our first responders is get these guns off the streets so they don't have to fight them anymore. 
One of my uh, colleagues, Yamish, was in your town a few days ago, and she spoke to some of your constituents. Yes. And she spoke yes. with one young man who said his fear was that once the cameras go, once the attention dies down, that all of this talk of reform and change and do something will disappear with it. Uh, I know you said that you're a hopeful person, but where does that hope come from? Well, we are seeing some marginal difference around gun control. I talked to Mayor Bloomberg uh, a few days ago, you know, who is the godfather of this work for mayors. Uh, and he said, you know, we are making some progress. You know, Indiana has a red flag law. The governor here is, is going to introduce a red flag law. It's a Republican governor. We're starting to see change. Is it as fast as I would like? Absolutely not. But I think after you go through one of these um, uh, mass shootings, it changes the community and it changes your perspective around um, common sense gun legislation, too. And let me be clear. Doing something is not about video games. Uh, this whole uh, farce around video games being the reason why we suddenly have mass shootings is a fool's errand. Uh, one example is the most uh, uh, aggressive video games in the world are actually in Japan. And last I've, se I've seen, they don't have the mass shooting problem that we do have here in America. Mayor Nan Whaley, good luck with uh, your community and with all the grieving that I know you guys are all have in front of you. Um, thank you very much for being here. Thank you.